Well, good morning, everybody. You can take a seat. Well, this is the day that the Lord has made. We ought to rejoice and be glad in it. I'm glad to be here with everybody once again here at Bethany Baptist Church. Uh, I've been here numerous times, and it's always a blessing to see people who will worship inside or out. <laughs> uh, and so it's a blessing to be here on this beautiful day in October. And I want to read a couple more verses um, from the book of Hebrews. So we'll be looking at Hebrews chapter 11, uh, verses 1 through 6. I made a, a, a quick insert, uh, just added a few couple verses. And so let me read that first, and then we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, it says this, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, Now faith is the certainty of things hoped for, a proof of things not seen. For by it the people of old gained approval. By faith we understand that the world has been created by the word of God, so that what is seen has not been made out of things that are visible. By faith Abel offered to God a better sacrifice than Cain, through which he was attested to be righteous, God testifying about his gifts. And through faith he is, though he is dead, he still speaks. By faith Enoch was taken up so that he would not see death, and he was not found because God took him up. For before he was taken up, he was attested to have been pleasing to God. And verse 6, here it is, and without faith, it is impossible to please God, because you must believe first that he exists, and that he proves to be one who rewards those who seeks him. Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 through 6. Uh, this morning, I want to preach for a moment with this thought in our minds. I want to preach from this topic, faith it till you make it. You've got to faith it till you make it. Would you pray with me? Uh, dear Lord, we thank you this morning for another Sunday that you've granted to us. We thank you that your word is, is powerful and true. We're thankful Lord God, that your word is, is so amazing that all we have to do is read it uh, to be impacted by it. And so this morning, I pray that you do uh, what only you can do. Lord God, I pray for your Holy Spirit to speak through me with power, with presence, Lord God. And I pray uh, for some heart that's here this morning. I pray, Lord God, that you will meet them where they are, that you will urge them to continue on in this journey called faith that you will give them the confidence to believe that you are a God who, who hears us and you diligently reward those who diligently seek you. And so, Lord God, I just pray you bless this time. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. A few months ago, I graduated from a leadership program uh, that was based in D.C., uh, the program focused on training young professionals, not just in our skill set, not just in our external skills, but the program focused on making sure that we were men and women who had character, that we were leading from our character rather than just our skill set. And so for two days, uh, once a month, uh, seven for seven months, I cleared my calendar, often boarded a plane, and went to D.C. to meet in person with other people in my group. At the conclusion of the program, I received a certificate stating that I had successfully graduated. <laughs> I received, thank you, <laughs> I received a small pin. I received a six-page booklet, uh, as well as a work bag and a, a few other items as well um, after the conclusion of the program. And a few weeks later, after getting back to Chicago, I noticed that that six-page pamphlet was lying on my desk. And so a few weeks later, I, I looked at the pamphlet, and I decided to read it. And as I opened the pamphlet and I sat down, there were a few words that grabbed my attention. It said, without faith, nothing is possible. With it, nothing is impossible. It was those few but potent words that grabbed my attention and set my mind racing as I read through her last will and testament. 
she would go on to write, here it is, faith in God is the greatest power, but great too is faith in oneself. And as my eyes gazed across each word, it dawned on me that this was a woman whose life showed evidence, or should I say proof, that she lived what she wrote. Her name, Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune, born in 1875 in South Carolina, went on to achieve great and weighty things. She was an activist, a philanthropist, a pioneer, and she even rose to become advisor to the president. She rose to become one of the most influential people, women of her generation. She started a school with five little girls that still exist to this day. It ballooned to become Bethune Cookman College, an institution that is still alive and well in Florida. But while she had many accomplishments and her accomplishments were endless and impressive, while she not only attempted but succeeded in work that still stands to the, this day, I was more impressed by her humble beginnings. As I studied her life, I learned that Dr. Mary Bethune, here it is, was the first person in her family not born in slavery. I wonder if you can imagine with me how unique, how different she must have been to recognize that and capitalize that just because her family history included unwanted bondage didn't mean she had to live bound. Her life is a real life parable that screams aloud to us. Here it is. It's not where you start that decides your God-given part. The circumstances of your life, the challenges you've had to overcome do not have to determine your future. And let me pause really quickly because that's a word for us this morning. For someone here who may be watching or who may watch later online, no matter how it has begun, it can get better. Knowing her background, knowing her family of origin, knowing that she didn't emerge from the highest of tax brackets, how was it that Dr. Mary Bethune rose to make much of her life? How was it that she didn't allow the pains and the problems, the prejudices to beat her down so much that she resigned to a less than life. I'll tell you how. She had an invisible, uncontainable, at times illogical belief that she was made on purpose for a purpose. In other words, she had something more valuable than money, more long lasting than drugs, something more exciting than pleasure, more potent than fentanyl. She had biblical faith. Oh, church, what, what a possession, what a prize, what a gift, what a blessing to have faith and to reap its many rewards. Because when I look at our world today, <laughs> the problems are many. The issues are countless. Relationships are on the mend. Distractions are aplenty. We have more information than ever, better technology than ever, yet more frustration, fear, and anxiety. Morals have decayed, school shootings are plenty, scandals are in government, entertainment, and the local church. And when I look around, it seems that the faith of many is barely holding on. But I came this morning to Bethany Baptist Church to, to, with one purpose, one plan, and I want you to remember this, that you can make it, but the way to make it is you've got to faith it. <laughs> I know you've probably heard it before. You've heard it said before. We all had that one person who, if you're sharing your heart's issues and your heart's problems, uh, you're, you're having a moment where you're trying to share all the things that are going wrong in your life, right? We have that person who, no matter the painful experience that you've been through, no matter if you've just finished crying and sharing your most intense thoughts and, and, and feelings, that after you share those things, there's that one person who says, you know, Life is what you make it, <laughs> right? We all have that person who always looks on the bright side, even so much so that they can disregard your feelings. But they would say life is what you make it. Your relationships might be going bad, right? Uh, but life is what you make it. Your job might not be going the way you want it. Uh, you might have gone through some tragic moments and you might have heard said before that life is what you make it. Well, 
if the writer of the book of Hebrews was here this morning at Bethany Baptist Church here in Chicago on October 6th, he or she might say to us that life isn't simply what you make it, but life is how you faith it. When we pull up to the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 11, we have to glide past the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We maneuver through the uh, through the Pauline epistles of Ephesians and Galatians, of Philippians and Colossians, of Romans. And we move past the pastoral epistles of First and Second Timothy and Titus, and we arrive at the book of Hebrews. Oh, what a great book, Hebrews. When you get some time, when you go home, please read the book of Hebrews. Uh, no one knows who wrote this book. No one knows when it was exactly written. It's, uh, it's interesting. I find it comedic, uh, God's sense of humor, that probably the most premier passage on faith in all of the Bible is found in a book written by someone we don't know who wrote it. Uh, it, it says to us that sometimes God puts interesting packages in places that we couldn't expect. The people who were to receive this letter from the book of Hebrews were believers who made a decision to leave the fleeting pleasures of tradition and follow the life and words of a carpenter from Nazareth. Though Jewish, they made a decision to follow Jesus. And like many of us, at the beginning of their faith journey, they followed Jesus wholeheartedly. They endured people talking about them. They dealt with friends who didn't understand their new lifestyle. They had uncomfortable conversations at the dinner table with family and friends who couldn't understand why they turned their backs on their Jewish ways. Some of them, because of their decision to follow Jesus, lost property. Others lost financial gains, all because they were sold out to follow Jesus. They recognized that their faith in Jesus did not promise them ease and comfort, but sometimes following Jesus meant difficulty and being misunderstood. But despite these trials, they stuck with their faith and they believed God. They, they trusted his plan. They didn't allow the obstacles in front of them to dampen the faith inside of them. They were on fire in believing that God would grant them eventually what they desired. They started well, but seconds turned into minutes. Minutes turned to hours. Hours turned to days. Days turned to months. Months turned to years, and years turned into more years. And the devotion of these people that they once had started to wane. And let me pause really quickly because that is someone's testimony here this morning. It seems that the faith that you once had in Jesus may have started to wane. You started off going to church <laughs> and reading your Bible. You started well fa fighting temptation, but then life, as the young people started to say, life started to life, right? And the journey that was once exciting and fulfilling and full of faith turned stale and difficult. And so the writer of the book of Hebrews has one mission to make sure the people who were to receive this letter would keep their faith focused and fixed on Jesus. And so how does he do this? I got three quick points and then I'm gonna take my seat. The writer of the book of Hebrews wanted to explain for us what biblical faith is. He wanted to remind them to look back at the examples that came before them. And he wanted to push them to understand the priority of their faith. He wanted to explain, to remind, and to push. When we get to verse one in Hebrews chapter 11, read it with me. The, the writer of the book of Hebrews says this, without faith, or excuse me, no faith, now faith is the certainty of things hoped for, a proof of things not seen. Oh, what language, church. The Bible is probably the best book ever when it comes to amazing language. But you know, this particular verse can be difficult to quite understand. I like how one commentator puts it. Uh, he puts it this way, in faith, 
things hoped for become realized. Uh, but, you know, this needs to be explained better because I know sometimes many of us believe that faith is an opportunity to hold God to unrealized plans that he didn't have for us. So many people turn away from God when we believe that God will do something for us in our lives that we may want, but that he never promised. When we think biblically, biblical faith, listen, church, is confidence that God will see fit to make sure his word will come to pass in your life. Biblical faith is to believe in Romans 8 that says all things, not just the good things, will work together for your good. Biblical faith is assurance that when we sin and we confess our sin, that he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Biblical faith is not holding God hostage to our words and our plans, but biblical faith is confidence that if God said it, it will come to pass. Her name was Fanny Crosby, born in 1815. Uh, as an infant, she became blind because of, it, because of a doctor's mistake. But Fanny Crosby was the type of woman who did not allow her circumstances what she could see, or in this case, what she couldn't see, determine her outlook. She had biblical faith. Though blind, her weakness was turned to strength. And because of that, when she lost one sense, uh, scientists tell us that when you lose one sense, your other sense is heightened. And because of that, she was able to memorize the first few books of the Old <laughs> and New Testament. She went on to become a writer and a poet, and she penned two of the most popular songs in all of Christianity. Maybe you've heard it. It goes like this, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchased of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. I can see my grandmother singing that song right now. But another popular song she penned, uh, another song that I remember from my childhood days, they would sing, Pass Me Not, O Gentle Savior, hear my humble cry, while on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. Savior, Savior, Hear my humble cry, while on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. She did not allow what happened to her to determine what God was going to do through her. And she turned her weakness, by God's grace, into strength. And these songs, they still inspire us today, and they will inspire us moving forward. Though she couldn't see, she had eyes of faith and believed somehow, some way, God's word was true and he would do more in her life than she could ask or think or even imagine. Because of her faith, she still inspires people till this day. Biblical faith is believing that God is telling the truth when life screams that he's lying. The writer of the book of Hebrews urges his readers by describing what faith is, but then he reminds them of their lineage. He, he describes what faith is, but then he reminds them to look back of their faithful lineage. Not just any lineage, their lineage of faith. I've heard it said before that it's hard to know where you're going if you don't know where you've been. Look with me in uh, verses 4 and 5 of Hebrews chapter 11. Uh, the text says, By faith, Abel offered to God a better sacrifice than Cain, through which he was attested to be righteous. God testifying about his gifts, and through faith, though he is dead, he still speaks. By faith... Enoch was taken up in verse 5 
so that he would not see death. And he was not found because God took him up for before he was taken up. He was attested to have been pleasing to God. You see, the original readers of or hearers of this letter were a people whose entire culture was based upon the Old Testament biblical stories, stories like Cain and Abel, Enoch, Abraham and Sarah. They would have learned these stories from uh, childhood to adulthood. They would have learned about these iconic moments uh, as a child, and they would have known these stories were stories that their parents and their grandparents and their uncles and their aunties would have taught them from a young age. And they would have learned these stories, and these stories would have helped them because what helps us in our journey towards faith is looking back at people who went through different challenges and got through it. If we're honest this morning, when life gets difficult, it can be it can be difficult to it can be easy, excuse me, to forget who we are. In order for us to move from thriving, or excuse me, move from surviving to thriving, we've got to be a people who remembers rightly. Because when we forget, we falter. But your faith will remain when you remember, I like how Ty Tribbett puts it, that if he did it before, he can do it again. The same God right now is the same God back then. If God did it for his people in the past, you can have faith in Jesus that those same promises are for you. Yes, the same God who empowered Abel to give a sacrifice to God that was pleasing is the same God who can keep you as you learn how to live for him. The same God who's given the spirit to Enoch, that he lived so righteously that God said, you know what? You're not even going to die. I'm just going to bring you back up here with me. The same God who gave Enoch that spirit is the same God who gives us his Holy Spirit this morning, because the same God right now is the same God back then. And if I'm honest this morning, that's my testimony. I'm here this morning because there were people who came before me, who told me about Jesus, who showed me through songs, through churches just like this, that the God we serve is real. And even when life doesn't make sense, even when you're tempted to quit, even when you want to throw in the towel, God will bring back to your memory people who stuck with it. And while at times it isn't always fun, while at times doing the things of God don't seem to always be, should I say, invigorating or exciting, little do you know that as we continue to live for him, little by little, even though you see that sometimes life doesn't go as planned, even though tears will flow and tragedies will strike, the way that we as a people will continue forward, the way that we'll keep going and trusting in him is by remembering where we came from, who we came from, by remembering the saints of old, by remembering uh, maybe in your own family life of grandparents or parents or people who model for you that sticking with Jesus is the best and only way. Even when hardships come, trusting in God, the same God who was present in the past, reminds us that we can trust God for the present. So hear me, church, you can make it when you understand what biblical faith is. You can make it when you remember that the God who was there for others in the past is the same God who is there for you right now. But finally, you can make it when you understand the preeminence or priority of faith. Look at verse 6 with me. The text says, and without faith, it is impossible to please God, to please him says another translation, for here it is, the one who comes to God must believe that not only does he exist, but he proves to be one who rewards those who diligently seek him. You see, church, this this is why I love God. (laughs) This is why I'm sticking with my faith. 
because we serve a God who's a God who doesn't simply want to reward those who look at him in a formulaic equation. We don't serve a God simply who wants to have us simply do right from wrong to get what we want. But we serve a God who, when he looks down from heaven, when he looks at us, when he sees our actions, he wants to really see what's our faith. What do you actually believe about him? Do you believe that he's real? And not only that he's real, but that he has good plans for you? Because the God that we serve is not one who simply just wants you to do as he says, but he wants you to believe that he's good and that he rewards those who seek him. Your actions, they do play a role in living rightly, but with God, it's impossible to please him without believing that he is real. And not only that he is real, he blesses, he rewards, he protects, he shows up, he is concerned with those who act, who desire to act and know him. There's a story in the Gospel of John where Jesus is starting his ministry. And as he's starting his ministry, he's doing things that Jesus can only do. <laughs> he's healing the sick. He's raising the dead. Uh, he's so powerful that people who are sick are just trying to touch his shirt. Uh, because when they do so, they are miraculously healed. And as the people are watching and seeing what Jesus is doing in John chapter 6, a group of people come up to Jesus and say, Jesus, you're doing great things. What must we do to do the work that God requires? And I wasn't there, but I imagine Jesus took his time when he was going to answer. I imagine he looked at them and he looked at them rightly. And the text says that he said, this is the work of God to believe in the one in whom he sent. That's really all I've got to say to you this morning. That how is it that we ought to live rightly before God? How is it that we make our faith actually realized? Well, in order to do, though, in order to do so, your faith is in one person. And his name is Jesus Christ. He was born miraculously, miraculously. He lived impactfully. He died tragically, but he was raised victoriously. And so now we know that we can make it in this life with faith. We can do it by God's grace. We can make it. Whatever it is that you're dealing with, you can make it. All you've got to do is keep faith in it. And if we look at Jesus we indeed will make it. Would you, would you pray with me as I close this morning? Dear Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you that your word is true. We thank you that your word is powerful, that it does more than we could even imagine. We thank you, as the writer in Hebrews would say, that your word is a double-edged sword. It's, uh, it, it, it cuts and it prunes. And so, Lord, I pray for someone this morning, I pray for someone who may be going through difficult times, who may be frustrated and thinking about throwing in the towel. I pray, Lord God, that they grab hold of this message and they, they remember that if they faith it, <laughs> they will make it. And so I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.